This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode 60. All resources and links you hear in this episode can be found by going to yourkickasslife.com forward slash six zero. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host. The girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to another solo episode. I have several things to tell you about. And, you know, this is another thing we're not supposed to do as, you know, online business people is to tell you to go in all these different directions. But I have a lot of things going on. So whatever floats your boat, and blows your skirt up, then you can go and do that or none of it and just listen to the episode that I'm about to drop. So the first thing is if you want to come and hang out with me in person and go to Mexico, doesn't that sound like fun? We are going in May. And when I say we, I mean me and Kira Sabin of Start Traveling Light and Amy Smith over there at the Joy Junkie. We're going to Mexico in May. And right now, August 2015, we have early bird pricing going on and we have limited spots for this retreat this time around. So get on it. And the price is going to go up at the end of August. So if you want in on that, triple T retreat.com. It's triple the word, the letter T retreat.com. I am also going to be doing a free training call on my three most effective ways to manage your inner critic That is coming up uh, this week, a.k.a. tomorrow. So it's at yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call, all one word, and you can sign up and get that for free. It's really important stuff. It's, you know, all of this stuff that I talk about, I would say 98% of it comes down to your self-talk. It's really the foundation of the work that I do. So I love to talk about it. I love to teach it, and I will be teaching it tomorrow night come and join me for free. And then the last thing I wanted to tell you about before I jump into the episode is coming up in September, well, two really important things. Well, one's important to me, probably not as important to you, but (laughs) important to you. Amy Smith and I, the Joy Junkies, who's also my best friend, we are going to be doing a free call on self-love. We are running the self-love revolution uh, master's course again. It might actually be called something else by then. We're working on a new name. We taught it in 2012 and 2013. It was really successful. Um, we changed it a little bit up last year and we decided to go back to the original, to the OG, because she and I were just talking like, and we're completely, we've remastered it, if you will. We've learned so much in our own personal journeys and our experience and working with people. We completely scrapped the old curriculum and have redone it. And we are in love with this curriculum. We can't wait to roll it out. But before that, we're going to do a free call on self-love. And we're bringing it down to basics. We're making it really easy to digest and understand and implement because that's the important thing. So the, the last thing that's coming up in September is I am going to New York City for the very first time in my life. Y'all, I am 40 years old and I've never been to New York City. It's kind of embarrassing, but there you go. People think that I'm like world traveled and cultured and I'm not. I grew up in San Diego and like we would go to like the Grand Canyon for family vacations and camping. That was it. And or like Tahoe. I have never been to New York City. I am going to go speak at Soul Camp. So I'm spending a couple days in the city uh, before I go up there and I am like, I, I don't know where anything is. And so I'm like figuring out the geography of the city. I'm going to meet up with some friends that, that I know there. And I'm really, really excited. Jesus take the wheel. So that being said, let's talk about self-sabotage. If you heard the title and you're like, okay, I'm not even sure what self-sabotage is. Here's what it is. It is more than just a Beastie Boys song, which it is a great Beastie Boys song, by the way. It's when you want, say you want to change really bad and you know what needs to get done. It's not like you're like, I don't know what what the resources are or what I need to do or the step-by-step process. You know what needs to get done in order to change, but instead of doing what actually needs to get done, you either do nothing at all or, I've seen this happen before, you do the complete opposite. So here's an example. You find out there's a position open at work that you are qualified for, and it would be a promotion, be more money. And you need to reach out to your boss 
you know, maybe because she was like, all right, anybody that wants to be considered for this position, either let me know or send me an email and, you know, by the end of the week or something. And, you know, you need to reach out to her to be even considered for it. So you'll figure like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes and it's tomorrow and you're like, I'll send, I'll send her an email by the end of the day because I've got a lot of other things to do. And the next thing you know, you procrastinated all week and now it's Friday afternoon and it's somebody's birthday and you're all standing in the break room singing. No, y'all have been there. And you're like, shit. Okay. Haven't done it yet. And why do we do this? Why do we do this? I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with that have had a homework assignment that they have assigned to themselves, not me making it up. So they have been like, okay, here's my homework assignment. Here's what I know I need to do. And then it's a week or two later and I'm like, hey, how did it go? And then they tell me they didn't do it when they had all the time and even the resources to get it done. Is it like, did aliens kidnap you? Did time stop for you, like Rip Van Winkle situation? No. This is self-sabotage. That's simply what it is. And, and, and you know, it's really not that simple because sometimes it's, it's far from simple and it's a seven-layer dip. It's, you know, seven layers underneath of what's really going on. And really, like if I had to bottom line it, self-sabotage is a way for us to feel safe. It, it happens a lot when people realize where they are and that they don't like it. And then they see what they could have if they change and they figure out what they need to do to change. And even if they want to change, the thought of going through the action of changing is too damn scary. And I can go on and on about vulnerability and there's so much risk and it's emotional exposure and all of these things. I'll leave that for another podcast episode. But here are three reasons that you might be self-sabotaging and because I ain't going to leave you hanging how to actually not do that anymore. All right, here we go. Reason one, deep down, you don't think you're actually worthy of having what you want. So this might actually not be something that you know in your conscious mind. So let's use the same example that I gave about the work promotion. So most of us don't go around thinking, I'm not going to talk to my boss about this promotion because I don't think I'm worthy of it. No, it looks like this. Like, here's what your self-talk is probably actually saying. The job is probably going to be way more hours than I want to work anyway, so the pay raise won't be worth it. Or you might think, the people I'm up against have more experience than I do, so why should I even bother? That's the kind of bullshit I'm talking about. That is what not feeling worthy looks like and sounds like to regular people, which, by the way, all of us are regular people. So the remedy is plain and simple, and I, and I really wish that like I could just wrap it up in like five minutes, but the remedy is, is to work on your worthiness. And working on worthiness is, I just put my hands in like a prayer position. I know you guys can't see me, but it's like, it, it, I, I'm you know holding it in very high regard here. So that's why I need to talk like this. But working on worthiness is a big ass enchilada. And I know that that wasn't (laughs) very profesh, but it is. It's this big thing that all of us struggle with from time to time. And, you know, it's like, I'm not immune to this either. You know, I go through periods where I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? It's like, oh, deep down, damn, damn that deep down, damn that deep down. It's worthiness. So I will tell you this that you can start with your self-talk. So remember that that free call I was mentioning on uh, working on, on your self-talk? That's tomorrow, yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call. And I'm feeling awfully animated today. I wonder if it's all this coffee that I've been drinking. On a complete side note, I'm doing a Whole30. Do you guys know what the Whole30 is? If you don't know what the Whole30 is, it's basically like this program where you cut out a lot of crap from your diet for 30 days to see what happens, and then you then you put it back in to see if it's the culprit for you feeling like crap. So my husband and I both are kind of feeling like crap, and we're like, wait, let's see what it is. So anyway, I'm about halfway through, and I'm drinking my coffee black, and it's actually not that bad anymore because at first I was like, this is the worst thing in the world, but... I drink a a little bit too much, I think. Okay. So start with your self-talk. Sorry about that side note. 
start with your self-talk and that will take you places that you probably didn't even know were bothering you and hopefully that will get to get you to where you want to be. Reason number two, another reason you might self-sabotage is because you don't think you can actually handle what it is that you're after, what it is that you're going for. And so, holy crap, I have experience with this one. So here's a personal example. Two years ago, I wrote a book and got a book deal and it was awesome and it was scary at the same time. So this year, I have made plans with my agent to start writing my second book. And thankfully, I have gotten past the inner critic and worthiness blocks around that that tell me I can't do it, that I'm going to fail, that no one's going to read it, that it's going to be terrible, and that I'm not good enough because those were there and I've worked through that. I simply don't, I don't believe that anymore because I use the tools. But now, I make up stories that sound like this. If I write another book, there will be even more exposure and probably more speaking gigs that are bigger with more people and just scary, like putting yourself back out there in an even bigger way. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. And this is exciting and scary and scary sort of wins out in my unconscious mind. And I decide, well, it's just too risky and it can wait like forever or something. And so I procrastinate and I'm like, well, I don't want to do it in the summer because it's just too busy and drag my feet. And then I get an email from my agent and I'm like, oh shit, I told him I was going to do this and I didn't do it. So I know that that, I, I know when I'm procrastinating and making excuses, something is going on. Remember, remember that big old rant I went on two weeks ago about not having enough time? I have enough time. Trust me. I deleted my Facebook app from my phone. You want to talk about having more time? Try doing that. Instagram is next. Watch out, Instagram. So I started another project. What I did is like, I'm going to start a new website. That's what I'll do instead of (laughs) writing my second book. So after I unpacked what was really going on, it was this. This new level of success was scary as all fuck for me. And my inner critic is all, "Um, who do you think you are? Thinking like you're a real author. Thinking you can handle all this success. Nope, nope, nope. So... How to combat that big pile of bullshit is to first first know what's happening in the back of your mind. Like if you're not aware of what's going on, then you're just going to keep spinning in that wheel. But now that I'm telling you all this, like hopefully you're like, oh shit, you know that's happening to me too. And maybe maybe it comes down to you're afraid of failure. Like that first example that I gave you about the work promotion. Or maybe you're afraid of success like I had to deal with a few months ago. Or sometimes it's both. I've been there too. But see it and name it for what it is. See it and name it for what it is. Because once you do this, you'll be surprised how much power that whole thing can lose. Like those, they're stories, basically. They're made up stories. But you'll be surprised at how much power you can lose. Or sorry, the stories can lose. Then tell your story to someone you trust. Not from a place of victimhood, like, oh, poor me, this is where I'm at. But from a place of, here's what's going on for me. I'm, I'm just sort of connecting the dots right now, and it sucks, and I'm working on creating a new story about what success can mean for me. And the last reason that you might be self-sabotaging is that you're just feeling plain lazy for a moment in time. If you really sit and think about it, and you're like, it's not really a matter of worthiness or fear around anything. I just am lazy. Maybe you're burnt out. Um, Maybe it's just really not the right decision for that time. And you're kind of trying to untangle that and see if that's true or not. And that's okay. We all are just know that that's what it is and that you're going to figure it out eventually and just really figure out what you need to do to stop such as like putting a container around it. Okay. Like I'm allowed to do this for a week or a day or whatever. And for a lot of people, That container means accountability, finding somebody that will lovingly hold you accountable and then finding out what motivates you and finally be able to get off your ass. So when you're in it, when you're in that sort of space of laziness, just get curious. You know, why have I spent the last four hours on Pinterest instead of, you know, fixing up my resume? What am I really afraid of? Maybe you end up finding out it's not laziness, but something altogether. So those are just three things to think about If you're self-sabotaging, let me just summarize them again. Reason one, you think you're not worthy of having what you want. Reason two, you don't think you can actually handle what you're after. And reason three, you're just being plain lazy. 
And again, I invite you to my free call tomorrow. If you can't make it live, that's fine because I always send out the recording. It's yourkickasslife.com forward slash free call. And I would love for you to share this if you loved it. It's in blog form too. So if you're listening to this, uh, there should be a link in that little description there. And it's yourkickasslife.com forward slash six zero to share and thank you so much for being here thank you so much for your time and I'm really excited about next week's guest we're going to talk about shame which I know you all are excited about you're like yeah I can't wait Andrea that sounds amazing (laughs) let's talk about shame baby all right I need to go take a cold shower or something thank you for being here I will see you next week and I will see you out in cyberspace bye-bye